When we got back together in 1997, people said it was great. Now we'll be able to find out what really happened when John met Paul. Okay, and people were expecting angels popping out from behind clouds blowing trumpets and stuff. <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately, that didn't happen. And I don't even remember seeing Paul at all that day. And uh, so I used to say, well, I went home for me tea. Those of you from this part of the world will know what going home for your tea means, going home to have you dinner. This didn't get a laugh, right? So in America, I then started saying the most important moment in rock and roll history, and I went for a pee, which got a cheap laugh. And uh, so it's now like that one. <laughs> That's a better one. And uh, an American friend of ours now um, sent me a JPEG of a beautiful painting, an acrylic painting he'd done of the moment John met Paul. And he said, you can see John and Paul there, and all the rest of the guys in the band, he said, and your banjo's there leaning on a chair. But I haven't put you in the picture because I was there when you told everybody you were in the bathroom at the time. So you have to be very careful what you say. <laughs> anyway, so apparently what really happened, and this came from Jeff Baker, Paul's publicist, Paul played 20 flight rock on a right-handed guitar upside down. Okay? He didn't do all the twiddly bits. He just played the chords. But if you think, for a left-handed guitarist, the world is full of right-handed guitars. So if somebody says, you know, why, let me have a go at your guitar, it's the wrong way around. If you're left-handed, the only way is to play the chords upside down. And apparently that's what Paul did. Anyway, this is the song he played, which impressed the heck out of John, especially because he knew the correct words. So we're going to give it a shot. Okay. Oh, man, I said, yeah, let's go, I'm 
played with John, Paul and George on that famous recording session. Colin's going to tell us something about it from behind the drums. Shoot, Colin. No, don't even shoot, Colin. <laughs> I am on my way. Well, in 1958, the quarrymen line up had uh, changed considerably. The washboard had gone, teacher's bass had gone, bands had gone. And it turned out it was John, Paul, George, myself, and John Duffalo on piano, if there was one there. And the lads found out that there was a place in Kensington called Bessie Coast where you could pay a small fee and go and make your own record. Now, to us lads that actually have a record was quite a big deal. So we found out that the price was actually 17 shillings and 6 pence. So for the five pounds, it meant 3 shillings and 6 pence each. So when we got to Percy Phillips Studios, he said, the best thing to do is to put it onto a router routine, tape, and then I can edit it and put it onto the shellac. And John said, how much will that cost? And he said, a pound. John Paul went white. John said, there's no way we're paying the whole pound. That was much, much, much too much. So it had to go straight on to the shellac. And one of the records, one of the songs that was on our regular set list was um, the Buddy Holly song, which you know on one side. And a song that Paul had written called In Spite of All the Danger, which just went on to the, the record and eventually found its way onto the anthology. So, we all got our three and six back with a little bit of interest. So we're going to try and do that one now for you. Thank you.
Owen Clayton, please give a big round. We have one on the base because it makes the rest of us look old, okay? John, do you want to come on? Talk on my mic.